One of the more common challenges that you might face with a diesel powered vessel and a diesel generator like the one we have here is a bleeding air out of the fuel system. For conventional generators and engines that use mechanical fuel injection rather than electronic, <clears throat> uh, getting that air out of the system is something you have to do manually. Uh, the best thing to do is to avoid air getting in there to begin with, uh, but if it does get in, it's, it's valuable or important to know how to purge that air out of the system. Most generators are the same as this one. Uh, there are a few differences, but generally the systems work the same way. Fuel comes in from the fuel tank or fuel manifold comes into a pump. In this case, the pump is mechanical, leaves the pump, goes into the secondary fuel filter that's uh, attached to the generator, then goes from there to the fuel injection pump, from the fuel injection pump into the injectors, uh, and then there is a return line that comes back from the injectors and goes back to the pump in this case and returns to the tank, so it does both. Uh, if you get air in the system, if you change a fuel filter, for instance, and, and you have air stuck in the fuel injection pump, the engine won't run. You can crank it, but, uh, but it won't start. A um, couple of things that you can do to, to overcome that. Um, the, there is a bleed uh, screw or a fastener that is on the top of most uh, secondary fuel filters. If you loosen that, this one's painted red, you can see, so somebody's identified it as, a, as an action item there. Uh, you can loosen that, and then if it's a mechanical pump, the mechanical pumps will have a lever on the bottom of the pump, like this one does. And you pump that lever, and fuel and air will come out of that uh, bleed screw. Once you get a solid stream of fuel coming out of that, you have then bled the air out of the system up to that point. You can then close that screw. The next screw that you would be open would be the one on the injection pump itself. So in this case, this one right here. And you would do the same thing. Loosen that, pump this mechanical pump until you got a solid stream of fuel coming out of there. You, could, you would have a rag that you would be using to catch that fuel and absorb it. Uh, once you've purged the air out of the system up to that point, you would then close that screw. Um, now you're at the stage where you need to get the air out of the fuel injectors. Um, you can't use the, the low pressure pump to do that. You have to actually use the injection pump to do that. So in that case, uh, that calls for loosening uh, these nuts that are on the top of the injectors. So these are high pressure uh, fuel lines. The fuel inside these lines when the engine is running is at several thousand PSI. Um, but we're not going to actually start the engine. We're just going to loosen those uh, no more than a turn and then we're going to crank the engine a bit. Now, when you loosen these, the fuel that comes out of there could, could be coming out at very high pressure, so we don't want to take a chance uh, with that injuring anybody with a stream of fuel coming out. So we're going to put a rag or a few rags over all of this uh, to capture any fuel that comes out. We don't want to actually have those exposed while we're doing this cranking procedure. Um, and then we're going to crank the engine a bit. Um, when you crank it, a little bit of fuel will come out of each one of these. First air will come out and then fuel, but ultimately it will be just fuel. At that point, you can then tighten these up again and then crank the engine and, and it should start at that point. Now, one other thing that you need to be aware of, if the generator is located below the water line or if the exhaust system is not self-draining, then we need to make provisions to drain water out of the exhaust system as we're going through this cranking procedure because if it requires uh, several minutes of cranking in order to bleed the uh, air out of the system, we could be filling the exhaust system with seawater and it could eventually back up into the engine. So our options are to either take the drain uh, plug out of the, the muffler and let that drain continuously while we're doing this, or we can turn off the seacock to stop seawater from coming into the engine. Of course, once the engine starts, we would have to remember to immediately open that seacock to give the engine cooling water, and certainly to put the drain valve back in the muffler if we've taken that drain valve out. Uh, once you've done that, the engine should start and uh, you should be ready to go.